Good evening, everyone. I'm Jay Cashmere. And I'm Kelly Dunn. Our coverage continues now of the deputy killed in the line of duty. He was patrolling the streets of Fort Pierce, and he had just pulled over a car when it happened this morning. Before he could even open his door, he was shot several times and killed. Tonight, we are covering every angle in the shooting death of a man who, by all accounts, was a model deputy. We begin with News Channel 5's Michael Williams anchoring our coverage live from the St. Lucie County Sheriff's Office. Michael? The sun sets at the St. Lucie County Sheriff's Office with the flag here flying at half staff. The day began at 7 this morning, the work day for 35 year old Gary Morales. A deputy sergeant recently elevated to that rank. Indeed, that happened just a month ago. And then the violent, deadly confrontation. As you look at a picture of Morales side by side with the suspect now charged with his shooting death, 25-year-old Arise Tisdale. The confrontation around 9.30 this morning in unincorporated St. Lucie County. A traffic stop gone tragically, violently wrong when, as indicated, that suspect gets out of his vehicle at the scene on Naylor Terrace, south of Fort Pierce, and opens fire with the deputy having no chance to respond or return fire. You see, about an hour and a half ago, the suspect walking outside, heading to the jail, escorted by deputies here, turning and glaring at the cameras both as he was walked, and then later in a vehicle, turning, staring straight into the cameras, unblinking, with a scowl on his face. The sheriff, Ken Mascara, said he had little to say. Motive here? They said, we simply do not know. The suspect had a record mostly for drug charges. Why he turned deadly, violently deadly today is something we may never know. The sheriff talking to reporters a short while ago. That's what makes this all hard. I mean, it was just a traffic stop in which he exited the car and began shooting. I mean, it was that simple. Sheriff Ken Mascara talking to reporters just before the top of five o'clock as he was surrounded by his colleagues, all of them with black tape over their badges, mourning the loss of one of their own. Now, for more on the shooting scene and the people who witnessed it, either they saw what happened and or heard what happened in the moments leading up to the shooting and moments after that when another deputy exchanged fire and gave chase, we go to Jeff Skrypek on the shooting scene south of Fort Pierce. Jeff? Well, Michael, investigators say it was right here along this very road where the suspect just identified about an hour and a half ago as a Reese Tisdale opened fire and killed Sergeant Morales. But tonight we're also learning about what happened after those shots were allegedly fired. A chase and arrest that happened just down the street from here, all captured on surveillance footage. These are the moments just seconds after investigators say the driver of the dark colored vehicle seen here in this surveillance footage shot and killed St. Lucie County Sheriff Sergeant Gary Morales. Right off the bat, just bang, 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 bang. Um, I mean, all the birds in the brush right behind our house just flew out. The person who pulled the trigger, according to investigators, 25-year-old Arisi Tisdale. They say after Tisdale pulled the trigger, he sped off, flying right by Kevin McLaughlin's home. I mean, cars all over this place. I mean, there's just, there's cops everywhere. Deputies say they chased Tisdale along Oleander Avenue, where he crashed his car into this pole. That's when deputies got out, arrested Tisdale, ending the high-speed pursuit of the man they say shot and killed one of their own. And then they do 50, 60 miles an hour down a dirt road right in front of my house and run over my cats. You know, somebody could have been out checking their mail, run them over. There's a lot of kids in this neighborhood. McLaughlin, a Marine who served overseas in Iraq, says he's seen people go down before, but today... It happened at home. Yeah, that's hard to watch. You know, it bothers you. You know, it's, you know, for all I know, you know, that could have been me. Now, the sheriff a little while ago telling us that the suspect, Arisi Tisdale, actually lived a few blocks from where he allegedly opened fire. But in the time that we've been out here talking with neighbors, talking with other people that live in the area, no one seems to know who he is. Michael? Thank you very much. I'm also picking up the latest on the bio on Deputy Morales. Again, 35 years old, 13 years with the St. Lucie County Sheriff's Office. Indeed, he had a chance to pursue federal jobs a month ago. The sheriff said, or about a year ago, and the sheriff said when he elevated him on January 18th to the rank of sergeant, he said, you know what, I'm glad I did it so that I can continue to serve my community. He was rooted here. A wife, two daughters, six and eight years old. When the news conference concluded, the sheriff had the mournful duty of gathering with the family to plan funeral arrangements. He came from a law enforcement family, did Morales, his dad, a New York City detective, retired. Now his brother, working 
as a St. Lucie County Sheriff's Deputy. Indeed, he was working today when this violent tragedy occurred. Again, an Air Force veteran born in the Bronx, proud to be part of this South Florida community. We'll continue to follow that aspect of the story and to look at a little more about the suspect's background. And again, the question at this hour, for somebody who had a long rap sheet but no indications of gun violence, what happened today to make him decide, according to the sheriff, to get out of his car at a traffic stop, to open fire before a savvy veteran deputy sergeant even had a chance to do anything about it. It's part of the story we'll continue to follow, sadly, an answer we may never have. All we know is that on this night, as I stand outside the memorial for fallen deputies with St. Lucie County, five names there will soon be added by a sixth as this community, department, and a family, most of all, mourn the death of Gary Morales. For now, I'm Michael Williams reporting live from the St. Lucie County Sheriff's Office. We'll be back with more on the suspect shortly. Just hours after the news broke of Sergeant Morales' untimely death, our crew spotted that wreath that was right behind Michael in that live report near the front door of the St. Lucie County Sheriff's Office. Obviously, pain.